So I was watching another Vox video and I noticed this effect that they had in one of the border series where they had this old slide projector with the photos sort of flicking through the frame. So I thought in this Vox video, I'd show you how to make exactly that. So this is a really simple effect to make and it just involves layering a few different things together. Now the first part is I just want to create a new composition. These are the settings here I'm using on screen if you wanna match my exact settings there. Now the first part is I want to just create a solid and we're going to create that little Polaroid effect. So I can just make this black and then what I'm going to do is come up here, hold down the clicker and then I'm going to create basically a Polaroid outline. Now, while I'm holding down my clicker, if I scroll my middle mouse wheel, I can control how much of a rounded corner I want. So maybe something like that, then I can just invert that and we already have that Polaroid. So two things that I added to that was a gradient ramp and a motion tile. And you can find that over here under the effects and presets by searching for them. Now these are the settings here that I've changed. I've just changed output width and height and just mirrored the edges because we're going to need that later. And the other thing I've done is I've added a gradient starting from about here, going down to about here. Now the top color, I've just made a lighter sort of black and then this one I've made a little bit darker. So it has a very slight gradient to it. And that just kind of adds that nice effect where it kind of has like that spill light coming over the top of the projector and it just kind of makes it look nice. The other thing is we're going to make this 3D and we're going to add a 3D camera over the top of this and we're going to basically project all of those layers and then use the depth of field effect in the camera to create that really nice lens blur. Now under this, what we want to do is start adding in the maps. Now the maps, I'm not going to supply for you, but all I've done for these maps is I've just gone online and searched for free images found a bunch of maps, but ideally in your case, you're gonna be using specific maps. It doesn't really matter what they are, but you can just drag them underneath your composition here. And then you can just pre-compose that layer into its own composition. Now, what I've done here is you want to basically start layering all of these little layers one after the other. Now, I found that you want this to be quite short. So here I'm probably going for somewhere maybe around sort of half a second, maybe even shorter. And then I'm just stacking them one on top of the other. I also scaled in on some of these and then rotated them around, but we're getting that sort of jumping effect. If I go to my original composition here, I've just stacked these one after the other all the way through my composition here. And I've ended up with this very quick sort of cut effect of all the different maps layered together. And I've only got about five maps in there and I've just kept copying and pasting them over the top. Now, if you're new to After Effects and you like these sort of tutorials and you want to know more about how to create all different types of animations, then definitely check out my Animation Master course. It teaches you a ton of different techniques for creating infographics, backgrounds, maps, graphs, and 2D animations. I teach you techniques that will help you in replicating videos you watch online. With over 40 videos and 50 animations to learn, you can check that out via the link in the description below. So once I've done my maps, I then added a few effects to this. The first thing I added was a Gaussian blur. Again, you can search for these effects over here. I've added about two Gaussian blur here and that's just going to give it a little bit of a softened look because we're going for that old vintage lens. So it's not exactly 100% sharp. If you don't want that and you do want it sharp, then just leave that Gaussian blur off. The other thing I've done on top of that is added a motion tile and that's going to come into effect when we start animating this in. That just stretches the output width and height over the top. And then the last thing I've added here is the Lumetri color. Now what I've done here is I've added a little bit of uh, temperature just to kind of warm that up on the white balance. And then I've just brought this down to add a little bit of that sort of sepia tone or that little bit of that yellow tone into it. I've brought my exposure down slightly and then just brought my contrast up just to help give it that little bit of a contrasty sort of old vintage look. 
and I've just dragged the saturation down very slightly. So you can see before and after, just gives it that nice little sort of old vintage look to my maps. Now there's two more things we need to add. One is the camera which sits over the top and that's going to be the main controller of the animation and the depth of field. But the other part of this is we're going to add a lot of that chromatic aberration and also some of those lens effects or those distortion over the top. So I first want to add a camera. Now this can be left at just 35 millimeters will be fine here. I've added that over the top. Now we're gonna have a little bit of an animation here at the start. So I've come in just over a second here and I'm going to add a point of interest and a position keyframe. I'm also going to add one here at the end I can also add a little bit of Z rotation. I'm just going to off center this maybe negative one here and then bring this back to zero here at the end. So that just gives us a little bit of twisting. I'm just gonna drop my resolution here just so it's easier for playback. And then what I want to do is bring up my camera tool. I'm just hitting C here to rotate through the different camera tools. And I'm just going to move this into sort of this position here. I want it to start like this. So with our Polaroid layer, I'm just going to bring this back very slightly here. So it sits above that layer and just scale it down. And you'll see why in a minute, because we want to create that depth of field effect. And then with all those front end keyframes, we're just going to easy ease out. And then I can also bring up the graph editor. Now with the position of interest, and the position, what I want to do is just basically scale these so we kind of get that smooth sort of start to the motion. So we want it to kind of start smooth and then ramp up as the camera pulls back. You can also drop the velocity of those end keyframes down there at the end. I'm also going to do the same for the Z rotation. Drop this one down. So we kind of end up with those more gradual sort of curves in our graph editor. That's gonna smooth out our entire animation here. Now the other thing that we want to do is now add depth of field onto that camera. So if I hit on, I'm gonna set my aperture to be a thousand and I want my blur level to be about 500. Now what I need to do is I need to adjust the focal point so that it lines up with that map layer. Now, an easy way to do this is if I select my camera and I select my maps layer, I can come up to layer, I can come down to camera and then link focus distance to layer. That's going to lock the focus point onto that layer. So as the camera's moving, it's always keeping that point in focus. Now I can just adjust that blur layer to get the amount of blur that I want on that front Polaroid. And because they're slightly separated and we've got such a shallow depth of field, we're getting that blur effect. So now you should have that movement nice and smooth as the camera is sort of starting up close and then pulling back. So the next part is we now want to add that lens effect which sits over the top. So we do this by layering over a few different effects. The first thing is I want to add a new adjustment layer and I want to basically put it above these two layers here. The first effect I'm going to add is grain. So you can just search for that over here and just drag it on top. You wanna to set this to be final output. I've dropped the intensity right down here because we don't want it too big. We want it kind of small. And I've also dropped the animation speed right down to 0.3 as well because we don't want it moving around too fast. The next thing I've added is the CC lens. So when you add the CC lens, it just makes it look like that. What you need to do is scale this up to about 300. Now what that does is it adds that sort of lens distortion effect, which sits over the top. If you want less of that, drag that up. If you want more, then drag that down. So anywhere around 300 to me looks about right. And you can also scale that down towards the end, maybe 350. It doesn't really matter. It just kind of gives it that nice distortion effect. The last part is we want to add the chromatic aberration, which sits over the top of this whole thing. Now by default, it's pretty close to what we want, but basically what you want to do is you want to mess around with these numbers here. I set these to three, two, and then negative one. Then I scaled this right down here, the field of view for the horizontal plane. 
And you can see what that does. It kind of gives it this distorted effect of the colors, almost like an RGB shift, but it's, but that's basically what chromatic aberration is. It's a lens distortion. Now, what I've found is if you go along about halfway here and create a fall off distance keyframe, you can scale this up to around 80. That's gonna give you more distortion. And then at the end, what you can do is scale this down to, to zero. So as the camera's moving backwards, we're getting less of that distortion effect. Now, if you find that's too much, so back here, if you don't like how much distortion there is, then just scale this down to get less or more of that effect. So it's just kind of personal preference as to how much you want to change there. The other thing is if you're getting too much yellow or red, then just mess around with these individual RGB values and you can move that shift as much or as, or as little as you like. But that's how you get that lens distortion effect and it's really nice to just have that over the top because it gives it a really nice look. Now, if I just play through that now, you can see we pretty much have that finished effect that's looking really good, but we want a way of animating this in so that it sort of has that slide effect of the, the individual layers flying in at the very start. So this is what I'm talking about here, this effect of it sort of sliding in at the very start. I had it slide in from transparent. So what I did was I added some X rotation here. So if I brought up those keyframes, what I want to do is just go down to my camera settings and under the X rotation, I wanna create one there and maybe another one here and then maybe one back here. So we got three keyframes there. What we're going to do is just drop this one down very slightly to maybe negative one. So it's kind of correcting back to then zero. So we've got a little bit of a bounce effect that we're gonna create. And then this one, I scaled it all the way up until I had my transparent background. Now what I did with this one was I just made this one easy ease out. I made this one easy ease, and then this one can be easy ease in. Now you can go through and adjust that in the graph editor if you wanna smooth this whole thing out. But I think by default, that's gonna be pretty close to what we want here. So if I go back to my original composition, you can see we get that little bit of a bounce effect. So that's pretty much all the movement. And this is a transparent layer. So you can export this with a transparent background and then just overlay that over your footage and it'll be a nice transition point. One last thing that I added over the top was I added just a vintage lens flare. Now this file, I have a bunch of them that I sell on my website, but I've given you two free files you can download. I've put a link in the description below to those and you can just download this vintage lens flare and all you have to do is just add it straight over the top of your footage. And the other thing is you'll want to change the mode to be lighten. You get that nice lighting effect which sits over the top. It just gives it a nice little bit of spill. So there you go. That's a super simple way of making this effect. Hopefully you've picked up a few tips and tricks along the way. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more videos just like this one over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.